tonight, live at the Scullery Theater, from the electronic dance music capital of the world in the heart of downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Join your host, Mr. Dylan Jorgensen, Jillian Minter, Trey Talia Barrett, and music by your truly DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, from 7 Second Black Belt, Sergeant Christopher Curtis. From the Dance Dranaut, Philip Plastina. And a spoken word performance by Chris Cipollini. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man also known as DJ Dirt Diggler, Mr. Trey Tayyapay! Yes! Yes! That's all right. That's okay. How is everyone doing tonight? Uh, we got a great crowd, great crowd. We got a great show for you. Did you just call me Derp Diggler? <laughs> Did. What, the, what is Derp Diggler? Well, DJ Derp. I have never DJed in my life. Well, the Diggler part means you're probably huge in the Philippines. Okay, so. yeah, we got that, Diggler. All right, yeah. That is accurate. Just kidding. <laughs> um, what does the Derp mean? What do you mean by Derp? Well, Derp is a, is a, a term used in electronic dance music uh, yeah, that's yeah. opposite of Deep. Okay, so I'm not deep, is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm not deep. That's fine. But it's probably whatever. huge in the Philippines. Well, okay, well, you can't have everything, can you? Oh, all right. Well, okay. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, well, anyways, Hillary Clinton is in the news right now, guys. Uh, turns out Hillary Clinton was using private email to conduct government business while she was Secretary of State. Ooh. Although, although this controversy is a potential breach in national security, it isn't the biggest scandal involving a Clinton and privates. Oh. oh, yeah. You guys remember that. Speaking of Bill Clinton, did you guys hear about this presidential portrait thing going on? Yeah. Yeah, the, por the artist of the portrait just re recently mentioned that there was a subtle hint to the infamous Monica Lewinsky blue dress. Yeah, yeah. The, the portrait was released in 2005, but no one noticed the hint. Uh, well, we have it here. Let's take a look at it. There it is, can you see it? Oh. Not that dress. Oh, you guys are over that, huh? Over that dress. Whatever. It's a good dress, right? No? We're Why? done. Why? Because. Because we didn't get to talk about it last week. It happened last Thursday. Um, maybe we didn't see it because it was, it's white and gold. Maybe, maybe we didn't see it because it was white and gold. This dress, this dress blew up the internet last week. Well, let's take a poll. Uh, who thought it was white and gold? White and gold, white and gold. Who thought it was black and blue? Oh, you guys are louder. I, however, thought it was a hideous dress. But the nation was divided. The, na the nation was divided. Yeah, right. Well, here's something crazy. The makers of the Snuggie have to pay $8 million for misleading its customers. $8 million? $8 million. Uh, They misled the customers. Turns out if you do wear a Snuggie in public, you will be made fun of. <laughs> Official. Yeah, yeah. Ringling Brothers um, and Barnum and Bailey Circus just announced that they will end their elephant act by 2018. Yet another downtown project layoff. Oh. Oh, that was too that custom. <laughs> That's funny, right? The Elephant Civil Liberties Union, or ECLU, <laughs> I like that part, has been working hard to find jobs for the soon to be unemployed animals. Uh, so here's a list of what they got so far. Elephant Uber drivers. Right? Yeah. Next up, Elephant Social Media Managers. Hey now. Right? He's, got, he's on his phone. He's on his phone. Just like Kyle. It doesn't look like Always me. on his phone. You got the same hair. I don't wear glasses. No. <laughs> not yet. You're not true. Yeah, whatever. And last, Elephant Nuclear Weapons Inspector. Yeah, that's a good job oh, for elephants. Good. All right, all right. We got a great show for you guys tonight. Stick around, but first, let's hear it for our DJ, Lenny Love Alfonso. <laughs> world's most amazing tool to stare at adorable cats, like all day. But it doesn't have to be that way, really. Tracky helps you connect, collaborate, and get stuff done. It's a social way to organize your personal and professional life. Inspire the people you work with. And 
inspire yourself to enjoy more of life's little things. And when the work is done, Tracky helps you plan and play. Gather your friends, have some fun. And make sure your plans are awesome. Fun, easy. Nobody needs to worry about bears this time around. A long day and a fun night deserve the thwack of a high five. Welcome to Tracky, the tool where everything and everyone in your life works together in harmony. Connect, collaborate, done. guest of the downtown community. Our, he's the author of Seven Second Black Belt. Let's bring out Sergeant Christopher Curtis. <laughs> Welcome. Please have a seat. You got a big fan club out there. They're just loud. Yeah. <laughs> it's not big, it's just loud. Yes, you can tell people that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Sarge, tell me about your background and how you got into, you know, what you do and where it led you to where you're at now. I was, uh, I'm from New York, New York City. Shout out to all my New York people in there. <laughs> um, I went in the Marine Corps when I was 17 years old. I spent five years in the Marine Corps. I traveled all over the world. And then I hired on to Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department in 1992, where I spent 21 years working on a lot of different assignments. All right. And so how did that lead you to Seven Second Black Belt? So I, I was always the type of person that I, I take a person's safety very, very seriously. I have three daughters. And as I've grown older, uh, the sanctity and safety of a woman is the most important thing, I think, in a society. So to me, to make women feel safe, it drove me to want to write a book so that, that people could instantly pick up and learn some of the things that I learned through my experience. Yeah. So did you feel that women were just not learning that out. Well, what happened you know. is so many times people would say, hey, Sarge, what would you do in this situation? Or what would you do in that situation? So what I did was in this book, The Seven Second Black Belt, 77 Scenarios, I took 77 actual scenarios that I've either dealt with or reviewed, and I presented it as a scenario. And in the book, it gives you the opportunity to think about it and respond as to what you would do. And then as a group, you can collectively talk about good or bad things that could occur if you were presented with this situation. And I give little tips throughout the book that it can also help you. So it's an interactive book, correct? Very interactive book. It's, it's more of a workbook, in fact. Uh, at UNLV on May 9th, I'll be teaching a class, and the book is required for the class. And we talk about these scenarios, and we build upon things that would help a person be safer. So it teaches you kind of the mindset you need to get through the scenarios, correct? You are actually a black belt with that answer, because this is not, yeah. she is, yeah. she is, give it up. So, the seven, a lot of people think seven second black belt, I'm gonna teach you how to karate chop and do all this stuff. See, the true champion is a person whose record is O and O. Because even if I win, I'm gonna incur some kind of damage. I mean, Floyd Mayweather, what, he's got 48 wins? I can guarantee you that his body is beat up in some way. I wanna go home not having gotten into a fight. And if a, if a robber was to say to you prior to robbing you, five seconds, 10 seconds before, I'm about to rob you, you would know what to do. But let me tell you, they do speak a language, but it's a language with body language. And if you can understand how articulate that language is, you would be able to avoid being involved in these types of situations. And that's what the seven second black belt is. It's the innate black belt that's inside you. Because I can guarantee you, I'm much bigger than you and I'm stronger than you, but I know that there is a person or something in this world that I could not get past you to attack. Every mother in this audience knows that. Every person in this audience knows that there is an innate black belt inside of every single person. We've just been conditioned not to understand that black belt. The seven second black belt is the truest method to bring you back to the core of who you are as a black belt. Got it. Okay, so we're going to practice some, right? We are. We can talk about it all day, but let's practice. Let's it. practice. Okay. okay. So, no. whoa, whoa. I am not fighting her. So here's the, here's the situation, okay? This is the one of the most common situations, again, and it's incredibly serious, and some women may be able to understand or relate to this scenario. Very often, I get women to say, you know what, I've been dating this guy, and he's been treating me weird or treating me 
strange, he's become violent with me. So here's a scenario that I'm going to present to you that quite often happens. You are at work, and the guy that you have just broken up with has being He's saying some things to you that are making you feel uncomfortable. In fact, he's saying some things that are making you think that he's going to be violent towards you. You know, I'm actually going through a difficult breakup. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, it's complicated. I don't really want to get into it. But, <laughs> All right. But yeah. Uh, no. Okay. So, okay. It's, no, okay. So here's the situation. So you are about to get off work, and he's called and said that he is probably going to be somewhere around you or your car when you get off work. You have the wherewithal to say, ask me to walk you to your car after you get off work. This happens all the time. So you've picked me to walk you to your car. So what we're going to do yeah, is we're going to Yeah, what else would I pick? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I wrote the book. Yeah. So, so you're going to have me walk you. I'm going to walk you to your car, and we're going to see how you respond to the situation. He's wearing a gray sweatshirt and a baseball cap, and we'll see what happens if we happen to run into him when we get to your car. OK. All right? All right. So we're walking out, and now we get to your car, and who do we run into but this there guy who's giving you a hard time. <laughs> so the book, would be, the book presents this in a, in a different manner, but I'm going to say this to you. How do you respond to this situation now that we're being confronted with this man, your ex, at your vehicle? Oh, oh I want to leave. This is like really awkward and uncomfortable. So, I want to get in the car as fast as possible and leave, and leave me by the myself. Situation. <laughs> to but that. you got this, well, right? Okay. So, first of all, we're going to have to question your judgment for dating him in the first place. Well, but, but, but let's. That's a subject, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get back. To, so, let's talk about three things. Three things that you can do in this situation that would be better than just jumping into your car and going. One is, if we know that this man has called and said he could potentially be at your work, how about having a friend drive by and seeing if, you're, if he or the, his car is inside the parking lot. This way we haven't even had to deal with him or engage him. Number two, if we know that, could we park the car next to a window that might be close to where we can look out the window before we have to go downstairs? Remember, that seven second black belt. Seven seconds that we have before the time that we have to actually engage something. And number three, having your phone ready and on 911 before you actually go down, so all you have to do is push 911. Those are three things that you can absolutely do so that you can still go home with the record of O and O. This person can end up in custody where they belong and get the help that he needs for being rude to a woman, which I would never do. This guy. <laughs> this guy. Don't get me started. <laughs> All right, great. Well, those are some good tips. Where can people find the book to get more information? This book is killing it on Amazon right now. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> Amazon.com, you can get the book. Seven Second Black Belt, 77 Scenarios. Retired Police Sergeant Christopher Curtis is my name, and you can find it any one of those ways. I really would encourage you to uh, May 9th, UNLV, Continuing Education, click on it. It's going to be a great class. I show actual scenarios and videos, and we go through those things. I would love to see you there and share some information and make everybody safe. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here and for teaching us how to be safe. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Take a break and step out to the dazzling lights. Start where it all began. Try your luck on Fremont East. Listen to live music as you make your way down the street. You'll collide and connect with amazing people. Later in the night, you'll find a variety of restaurants ready to satisfy any appetite or craving you may have. Pick any bar, lounge, or cafe. Have a craft cocktail while the kids go down the slide as you relax and unwind with your favorite drink. Explore the shops and galleries you'll find curated items just for you. You'll love downtown Las Vegas. Show the world. Visit us online at lovedtlv.vegas. Our next guest is a poet, and he knows it. Yeah. Hey. Just like that, I'm good too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for spoken word artist Chris Cipollini. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am a spoken word poet here in Las Vegas. I love poetry. It's what I live for. And uh, one thing that's always really bugged me with artists or anyone in any creative avenue, no matter what you do, 
is when they hold back, it bugs me. Art isn't about holding back. Art is about expressing to your fullest and then going even further. It's not about restraining. Always go there no matter what you do. So this poem is called Go There. It's kind of my signature piece, and I hope it resonates with you. Young poet, young painter on a hill, timid dreamer that's standing still, be not afraid and go there. May you draw that drawing that causes people to scream. May you pen a poem that makes it seem as though you've gone insane. May you electrify with melodies that will mystify a thousand and one brains. But most importantly, may you always, always go there. May you reprise the drawings of your childhood with both glory and zeal. May you burn through your ego and your limits and declare what is real. May your nights be kept sleepless by that crazed muse within. May you be one with your tools as creation vibrates from your skin. Feel those waves and gyrations about your young head, for it is better to be thought a lunatic than play it safe and become dead. Always, always go there. May art's inanimate pleasure rend you moments to treasure. May you cause outrage. May you cause relish. May you summon emotions that no words can embellish. May you be struck dumb by moments where you stop in awe and wonder and stare because there's another artist out there who decided he too would go there. May your work summon emotions that would cause nerves to crack for God would have not formed the universe had he chosen to hold back. It is the obligation of man's innate creation that he animate all existence. Yet none of this shall come to pass if he burdens himself with resistance. My work isn't for everyone to understand. Tim Burton. We contain multitudes. Walt Whitman. The world and I are very different people, and we are steadily growing apart. Paul says on, I find beauty in the strange and unusual. Lewis Carroll. May these words tickle your vertebrae and down to your hair, for it is your right as a human that you always go there. May these words be with you even as you take to your bed. And even if you forget every last word I've said, please go there, go there, go there. Thank you. That was great. That was great. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to start writing again. <laughs> that, was a, that was Chris Cipollini. Stick around. We have a great surprise for you guys. But we'll be back right, right after this. Yeah. 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 So excited. So here tonight with me is a special surprise welcome. Dancernauts, come on out. Thank you. What <laughs> up, man? <laughs> You're the fist pumping thing, yeah. I learned that, I learned that from my raving, the fist pumping. <laughs> oh. uh, how about that? Can I do it with you guys? Yo, yo. Awesome? Mic like... check, one, two. <laughs> All right, I did it after. Nice. Well, thank you guys for coming out. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, I got a chance to do a pre-interview with you, and I realized you guys aren't just walking up on stage and uh, acting like celebrities. You guys do a lot of work behind the scenes. So talk a little bit about what it takes to put the Dancernauts on as a full show. Sure, definitely. Uh, Dancernauts was born and grown out of Burning Man, which is a volunteer-based uh, event. And a lot of us got together, and we decided to make this car and some people were interested in bringing us to Vegas and do some shows <laughs> down here, and we're like, well, you know, we, we're volunteer. We, we just do this for fun. Yeah, and oh, like, volunteers, you know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so like, come down to oh, Vegas yeah, yeah. and volunteer <laughs> down here, you know? It's like, sure, we're yeah. downtown project. We need volunteers, like, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, I actually, so I do want to ask a question, but I probably should have started. Like, explain what Dash for Nazi is. Like, what is it? What do you guys do? Okay. We are a, uh, an EDM performance troupe, and we produce our own music, produce our own dance moves, we make our own costumes. Uh, we oh, have well, my mom made mine, so. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never known. I would have never known. We have a theme stage, you know, space. Uh, it's a space station. That's our main stage. We have a spaceship that everybody rides on. Yeah, it's, uh, and there's fire and yeah, stuff. Fire yeah, fire comes out of it. It's got a 30-foot scissor lift. Uh, you can go online and check us out. We're on, you know, Facebook and YouTube, and we've got plenty of videos. Yeah. Um, but one thing we were getting at is that a lot of other performers just fly in, and they show up to an event, like, let's say, EDC. You know, let's, well, that's a, right. a weekend event. And they'll perform for two hours. Well, here's a dancer not typical day. You know, we'll start out a couple days before. We pack the whole entire trailer. I drive, they drive. We drive 13 hours here, sleep a little bit, get up the next morning. We set up 13 hours the next day, sleep a little bit, wake up. We perform for eight hours straight, go back to bed for three hours, break the whole entire stage down ourselves, 
drive 13 hours back to Santa Cruz and take everything out of the trailer. So that's five days straight. And we usually do it for free. And it's not just us <laughs> three doing it. There's about 20, 25 hardworking best friends that yeah. are amazing, talented people that all bring a piece of puzzle uh, to this to make it what it is. That's what I feel too, yeah, yeah same I, thing. I wish they could be here actually because yeah. they're awesome and they're fun and they got this, you know, you can definitely so they need a break. see them out of the crowd. It sounds like they never get a chance to sleep. No, but when we play our songs and our tracks, they come out and it brings the energy. So okay. we're going right. to play for that th for them this weekend in spirit of them. All right, so you're not divas, huh? Well, some of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Just, just one. Just one. Just one. Just okay, so tell me about this album and the song you're going to play for us. Sure. Uh, we've been working on producing some music this year, and uh, this is... The album is made up of some Melbourne, which is a sound that's coming out of Australia. It's a newer EDM sound, and also oh, okay. Future House, which is a new type of house music that's coming out of Los Angeles from a bunch of very young EDM artists that are graduating from a school there, mm -hmm. and they're coming up with a whole new wave of music. It's really cool. It's coming from here, out of the whole world, you know. So I'm going to hear but, uh, Future? Future House. Future House right hearing. now? Yeah. Who's Actually, ready for some Future House? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. Cool. You guys ready to party a little bit? That's great. You guys got to get up and dance with us. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a go. Everyone's going to have to stand for this. Ready to dance? Well, uh, the name of this track is Mel Beasy. Yeah. yeah. Go. You got... Looks like we got. Let's see what happens when we play this song. Oh, where all these girls come from? Forty dance do not show up in the studio. This is the family, everybody, right here. You guys ready to rock out with us? Thank you guys. All right, give it up. Tell them they can check it out online. Where can they buy it? Yeah, you guys can check this out online. It'll be for free download on our SoundCloud, Dance or Not SoundCloud. Also check out Dance or Not at Facebook. And we are all over the internet on YouTube, so check out our videos. And if it looks like fun, come party with us. Also, we're doing a free show at NASCAR this weekend. So if you want to come down, we're in the Midway, which is outside the track. Come party with us. Yeah, put it together. Give them a huge round of applause. Give it up for him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all coming out. Thank you so much and good luck. Yeah. Keep it going. That's good.